I don't know what Trump plans to build his wall with, but I know what he plans to build his campaign with, and that's lies. And so I'm going to do what I have been wanting the media to do this entire campaign off into the Republican primary, is to make sure that his lies don't go unchallenged, that people who are occasionally checking in on this election aren't allowed to believe the crazy false things that he says on a daily basis. And so, although it's largely a thankless task and largely a repetitive one since he lies so constantly and um, doesn't seem to be affected by fact-checking, I'm going to continue today with a speech that he gave about foreign policy. And I'm just going to address some of the lies. We could go through the entire goddamn transcript, but that would largely be a waste of both of our time. So let's talk about some of the most common ones, which not only he will use, but very often his supporters will use on Twitter, and so you should be armed with the right sort of information. Now, the first one is one of Anna Kasparian's favorite lies. And so he continued on Wednesday saying that the U.S. has the highest tax rate in the world, which he has said about once every 15 minutes since he declared for the presidency. But of course, it's actually not true. It's not true It's not true even on a base level if you simply look at our tax rates, but especially once you factor in the sorts of deductions and, and those sorts of things. The, the actual tax rate that people and corporations pay in the U.S. isn't even close to the highest. In fact, for, from about 34 industrialized nations in the OECD, we are about in the middle between Norway, New Zealand, and Luxembourg. We're not the highest, we're not the second highest, we're not number one! We're somewhere in the middle. And trust me, many corporations are doing quite well. Many of them pay effectively a zero tax rate or actually get money back from the U.S. government. But you're not going to hear Donald Trump talking about that. Uh, by the way, he should know something about this since there's a good evidence that he, uh, in multiple years, especially early on in his career, paid zero in taxes by taking advantage of loopholes and those sorts of things. Uh, he said that there is no plan to screen Syrian refugees. He has said this very often. He said it again in his speech today. It is a 100% ball-faced lie. It's a lie. It's not just wrong. He knows it's a lie. He's continuing to repeat it. I did a final judgment about this, which you can find on the Young Turks, where I break down the actual process. Not the hypothetical process, but literally only reading step by step all the different steps that you have to go through as a Syrian refugee to get from there into America. It can take up to two years, involves multiple rounds of fingerprinting and interviews and background checks and security checks and final checks and all of that. Go watch the, the final judgment. Uh, not only do we not have no plan, but we have a ridiculously detailed plan. Now, does that mean that it's going to stop every bad seed from getting in? No, but considering that every person who does get in who isn't innocent is being saved, possibly their life being saved from being killed in one of the most hellish environments in the world today, maybe you should weigh that when we're talking about the process and how much uh, fucking vetting there is in it. Uh, let's see, hundreds of recent immigrants have been convicted on terror charges, he said. He says uh, Mexican immigrants and also those from the Middle East, they're criminals being brought in. Of course, it's not actually the case. Now, there are some immigrants who've been implicated with uh, early stage planning of attacks and things like that. And there will be the occasional terrorist or mass shooter. This is America. We have them almost every day at this point. But no, the vast majority of those committing acts of terror here were born here. Many of them white, white right wingers. I know that you're not supposed to say that. People on Twitter hate it for some reason. I don't know why we should be okay with terrorism if it's a white Christian who does it. I personally think it's still fucking awful. Uh, he was almost assassinated over the weekend by a British immigrant. But he doesn't care about that, necessarily. Uh, at least that guy was actually an illegal immigrant. So he had something there, perhaps. But he doesn't care so much about that. Uh, no, they, they tend to be people who were born here. Um, and that doesn't seem to matter to him. And look, the reason that it bothers me, the reason that I harp on it is because, I mean, these are people who are coming here to improve their life for the most part. Some trying to escape political persecution, impending death in a war zone. And there's no empathy from the, the block of Americans who call themselves Christians, who say, we have this book filled with divine wisdom from the most perfectly moral being that has ever existed. Those people who are trying to get away from being bombed, fuck them. I don't give a fuck about them. I heard that there was terrorism here. It's amazing how that works out. Uh, he claimed once again that he was one of the first to criticize the Iraq War. That is one of the most laughable, demonstrably true, un uh, untrue things that he says. Demonstrably untrue, I should say. Um, he said in uh, 2002, if he supported the invasion, he said, yeah, I guess so. 
this is right on the eve of the actual invasion starting. There had been a lot of debate at this point. We knew something about what was going on there. He said, yeah, I guess so. Uh, in a 2000 book, he said that, you know, if the rationale was that Iraq has nuclear weapons, I'd understand why we didn't in, uh, invade them. Well, that was the rationale. It seemed uh, untrue to me at the time. You bought it. And in 2002, you said that you uh, accepted the invasion as well. Now, in 2015, he started uh, criticizing the war. Well, sure, fucking Hillary Clinton was against the war at that point. He don't get any brownie points for being against the war more than a decade after it had been started. To say that you were one of the first to criticize it is ridiculous. Now, look, if you want to attack George Bush and say that he lied to us, that's true. You can say that. But you can't say that you knew ahead of time because you didn't. You supported the war, so shut the fuck up. He also said some stuff about the trade deficit with China soaring. He was totally inaccurate about that. Look, it's frustrating listening to him speak because for the most part, it's nonsensical, idiotic, five-year-old gibberish stream of consciousness. And when he does give specifics, very often they're completely untrue. Very often they've been shown to be untrue since the, the, the campaign began. And it is annoying to have to keep going over this. It's annoying to see on Twitter and on Facebook and on Reddit that his supporters, his idiotic supporters, who have no interest in actually understanding what's going on, repeating the same fucking lies over and over and over again, especially about things as important as whether you knew that going to Iraq was wrong or not, that you had the judgment and the foresight to know that. And you know why that bothers me personally? Because Bernie Sanders did know ahead of time, motherfucker. You are lying, but Bernie Sanders was right, and he was right when it was difficult politically to be right. He wasn't just some fucking real estate agent uh, who was writing books at that point. He had to actually vote. He was actually on the record. His campaign could have been ruined, but he did the right thing. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to turn into a Bernie Sanders thing. I just, I fucking hate lying and I hate Donald Trump. And so the intersection of the two gets me really pissed off. But I'm going to continue this throughout this campaign because Donald Trump is a fucking mess. His logic is a mess. His memory is a mess. His ability to craft an argument is a mess. He has many, many messes and I'm going to try to keep him in check.